In 874, overwhelmed by the attacks of the Danish invaders, the Great Army, Burgred, King of Mercia since 852, abdicated and departed for Rome, and a puppet king, Cowulf II, was installed in his place. The facts about the rest of his 22-year reign are sparse, but it would seem that in the 16-year period up to 686, Burgred presided over a revival of Mercian power and maintained a military and dynastic alliance with Wessex. Now I've recently ticked off a small milestone in my coin collecting journey by acquiring an early Saxon penny from the reign of King Burgred. The Saxon coins in my collection prior to this consisted of coins from kings who ruled the whole of England rather than kings who ruled one of the four kingdoms. One of the most intrinsically beautiful elements to the early Saxon coins that is so appealing to me is the three line lunette design on the reverse. The early Saxon coins that these are attributed to are usually expensive and therefore have been off my list for a long time. Now, unfortunately for us, Burgred's reign left very few artefacts or documents. His coinage is his principal monument and survives in greater volume than for any other 9th century Anglo-Saxon ruler south of the Humber. It is also, despite this disruption of the latter part of his reign, the most consistent of any Mercian king, comprising one issue with the obverse always having a bust facing right and a reverse always with the Munyar's name in between two lines, all with five design variations. The most common of these variations is the enclosed lunette, and this has led to the coinage being known as the lunette coinage. Burgred's coinage, because of its longevity, stands out from its immediate Mercian precursors and contemporary Wessex issues. Nevertheless, it cannot be detached from either. The coinage of his immediate predecessor in Mercia, Bert Wolf, maintained the traditions of the Mercian coinage from the time of King Offa, and a number of different types that seem to be associated with a number of die cutting centres or die cutters. In a time where the coinage of Charles the Bold faced great debasement and losing the faith of the country's currency in this people, the coinage of King Burgred across 22 years was remarkably consistent with the standardisation of a single design indicating strong central control of the coinage similar to Wessex. This seems to have been maintained even after 868 in the face of the ever-increasing economic, military and political pressure on the Mercian Kingdom. What is striking about Burgred's coinage is its difference from what had been produced before. The Lunette's type of Burgred seems to have sprung from a complete reassessment of the coinage at the very beginning of his rule. A one-type coinage with a right-facing bust on the obverse and Lunettes with five variations on the reverse seems to take hold. The single typology contains its own design variations, most notably in the Lunette designs, but also in tunic patterns and regional titles on the obverse and pellet combinations in the Lunette angles on the reverse. This original one-type coinage concept proved so successful that it continued to be issued for 22 years and became the unified type for Wessex and Mercia. In the middle of the 9th century, four major coinages circulated in England from all four of the kingdoms, and to supply those coins stood four mints. One in East Anglia, standing apart from the rest and primarily supplying its immediate neighbourhood, London, Canterbury and Rochester. The largest was Canterbury, where the King and Archbishop employed some eight moneyers between them, and where the bulk of the Wessex and Kent coinages was produced. The dies were cut by hand, and there is a general if not complete uniformity between them. An examination of the dies of 592 coins of Burgred has shown that they were struck from 521 obverse dies and 558 reverse dies. Of the reverse dies, 316 were of type A, 143 of type D, 80 of type C, 17 of type B, and 2 of type E. This represents perhaps a third of the coins of Burgred in circulation now, and a tiny proportion of those actually issued. No survey of a comparable 9th century coinage dies has been undertaken, but compared for instance to the St Edmund coinage, the number of die links and die duplications is uncommonly small. This study shows the amount of die variations generated during the start of Burgred's coinage, with the high levels of minting occurring during the first half of his reign. Now I was very lucky to acquire this coin at a very good price, as it is a wonderful example despite the nibbled edge. This single coin has reignited my passion for the early Saxon coinage, and to finally own one is a dream come true. The obverse displays King facing right, with the legend beginning at one o'clock, reading Burgred Rex, or translated King Burgred. If you look closely, you can see remnants of dirt deposits from where it was found detecting. And I would have loved to have spoken to the original finder, because for me, 
Knowing the city and the date it was found only increases my excitement. The reverse of the coin shows the Lynette design, with Mon at the top, which I think might be for Munier, and Dudder in the middle, for the Munier's name. I'm so new to this, and I'm not too confident that it's correct, so please feel free to correct me down in the comments. So there we have it! I hope you've enjoyed today's video on the penny from the reign of King Burgred, my first ever early Saxon penny. Be sure to comment down below your examples from this reign, and whether or not it's on your bucket list. Thank you all for your continued support, and as always, keep collecting!